Bismillah. Assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Sin leads to other sins. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَذِبِ فَإِنَّ الْكَذِبِ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ والفجور يهدي إلى إلى النار ولا يزال الرجل يكذب ويتحرى الكذب حتى يكتب عند الله كذابا. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, I caution you against إياكم والكذب. I caution you against caution you against lying. For indeed, lying leads to other acts of criminal acts or sinful acts. And other sinful acts lead to the hellfire. And an individual will continue to lie and lie and lie until he is written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an absolute or habitual liar. So you can see that sin is a gateway to other sins. The greatest thing that sin leads to is kufr. As some of the scholars in the past, they will say, Antum takhafun al-dhunub wa nahnu nakhafu al-kufr. You fear sin because you only see the immediate sin. But we fear kufr, disbelief, because as the scholars say, kufr. Sins are a gateway to kufr. Sin leads to disbelief. A person continuously, habitually committing sin, sin, sinful, sinful acts, it hardens the heart to eventually you become vulnerable to the shaitan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان اكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين That like the shaitan when he comes to the human being and he says disbelieve. But the shaitan doesn't just come to you and say disbelieve. There is a step by step process that he walks you through until he catches you at that vulnerable moment and he says disbelieve, just give up. Allah is not going to forgive you. Why well, try? If you go to paradise, alhamdulillah, if you go to the hellfire, you can deal with it. Don't worry about it. And then when you disbelieve, the shaitan says, I'm free from you. I fear Allah. The Prophet said of this ayah was in reference to an incident that happened amongst Bani Israel. The Prophet وسلم, he said that from amongst Bani Israel was a righteous, a pious man. I don't want you to look at the shaitan because this is his blueprint. This is how he comes to every individual. There was this righteous man from Bani Israel who Shaitan wanted so bad. And here again, it shows you the Shaitan, he goes after those who try to maintain self restraint, self discipline, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants them very bad. Because by getting them, he gets everybody that believes in them. He tries to destroy your hope by going after people who are influential. Which is why when the Prophet Sallallahu made the Isra wa Mi'raj when he went to, uh, from Mecca to Jerusalem in one night, right? The Kuffar of Quraysh, they begin to use that as their trump card. Because it was a known fact, there's no way that you can go from Mecca to Jerusalem in one night. No way. And this was, you know, actually called the year of apostasy. Because so many of the Sahaba apostated from Islam. And they figured if we could get Abu Bakr, the most influential of the Sahaba, to disbelieve in this, then we can get everybody else. So they went to Abu Bakr and they said, Halaka ma qala sahibuk. Did you hear what your companion said? And Abu Bakr, before he even heard anything, this shows you true companionship. Today, we don't have companionship. We don't have suhbah. We have affiliations. We have ilaqat. So on kind of diniya or dunyawiya, it doesn't matter whether these connections or affiliations are related to deen or dunya, it's still not suhba, it's not companionship, true friendship. So they said, did you hear what your companion said? And Abu Bakr radiallahu without even hearing what he said, he said, in qadahu faqad sada. If he said it, it's the truth. And another narration, they went on to say that your companion said that he went from Mecca to Jerusalem in one night. And Abu Bakr anhu, he said, Inni la aman bima huwa abad min hadha. Aman bi anna hu unzila ilayhi min as-sama. 
He said, I believe in something far-fetched in that. I believe that he received revelation from the heavens. If I believe that he received revelation from the heavens, then anything less than that, from Adunahu, min babi ola. And of course, I believe in anything less than that, without a doubt. But you see how shaitan comes to the most influential, because if he can get that person to sin and fall into disbelief, then he will get everyone else who believes in them. Right? So this individual from Bani Israel, the shaitan wanted him very badly. So what did he do? He possessed a girl. He possessed a girl. And of course, demon possession or you know, jinn possession is real. We have that in Islam, it's very real. So he possessed this woman. And he came to the parents in the form of an advisor. And we know the shaitan, the jinn can take on human form. We know that from many hadith. The hadith of Abu Huraira in Sahih Bukhari, where the Prophet وسلم, placed Abu, uh, Abu Huraira over the sadaqah of Ramadan, the zakat al fitr, food during the time of the Prophet. And the man came and tried to steal from the food. When Abu Bakr caught him, he said, I'm going to take you to the Prophet. He said, No, let me go. I'm a poor man. I don't have anything. Abu, uh, Abu Huraira let him go. He came back three nights in a row. And the third night, he said, I'm going to take you to the Prophet. He said, No, I'll teach you something that you will, you, Allah will benefit you with. He said, What's that? And he taught him ayat al kursi. And when Abu, Abu Huraira went to the Prophet, the Prophet asked him, Do you know who you were talking to for the past three nights? He said, No, who? He said, That was Shaitan. He told you the truth, but he's a liar. So we, can, we know the jinn can come in human form. So Shaitan possessed this particular girl and then came to the family in the form of a sincere advisor. And he told the parents that there's a righteous man over here that can perform ruqya, can, you know, cure your daughter. So the parents took the girl to this righteous man from Bani Israel. And the man said, leave the daughter here with me. And I'll continue to do the ruqya on her till I can get her cured. So the parents left the daughter there. And the shaitan, every time he would go to the daughter and talk to the daughter to try to, you know, do the exorcism on her, uh, the shaitan would beautify the girl to him. And so eventually, he had relations with her. When he had relations with her, Shaitan came to him in the form of a sincere advisor and said, I know what you did. And on top of you being intimate with her and everyone is going to find out about it, she's pregnant. How do you get out of this situation? Kill the girl and the baby and no one will ever find out about it. And eventually the individual, he killed the girl and the baby and buried them. The Shaitan went to the family of the girl and said, the girl, your daughter, the righteous sheikh that you left your daughter with, he had relations with her. He buried the body of her and the baby, and I can point you in the right direction. The family went, and he showed them where the body was. When they went and they seized the man, this righteous man, for what he did, the shaitan came to him as they strung him up and they were going to hang him. The shaitan came to him and said, I can get you out of this situation. All you have to do is prostrate to me, and I'll get you out of it. I set this whole situation up. I possessed the girl. I went to the family and told them to come to you. I came to you and told you to kill the girl to escape the scrutiny of the community. I went back to the family and told them where the body was. How do you think all of I set this whole situation up. All you have to do is disbelieve in me. And believe in me, and I'll, I'll get you out of the situation. The man said, okay, and he believed in Shaitan, and he said, I disbelieve in you, I fear Allah, and they ended up killing him anyway, and he died upon disbelief to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is here that sin leads to other sin, and the way to rid yourself from sin is not to carry the guilt of it, but to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Tubu ila Allahi jami'an ayyuhal mu'minun la'allakum tuflihun. Repent all of you to Allah so that perhaps you may be successful. Repent, all of you who believe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that perhaps you may be successful. So this is the, the, the benefit of this, and to understand, and I mean there's so many lessons in this narration, in this hadith, um, but the point here is that sin leads to other sin, and the way to get rid of the sin is not to go and commit more sin, right, to 
try to make yourself feel better about the sins that you already committed, but to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to rid yourself of that burden and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu wa ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslimin kathira. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.